Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking another extended look at some game performance updates, some new games booting, and some fairly significant game compatibility updates for Yuzu, this Nintendo Switch emulator. Before we get started with any kind of game compatibility discussion though, I wanted to show all of you guys this teaser image. While Sonic Mania running in Yuzu emulator may not be a big thing for anyone, when you look at the title bar and see that this is Sonic Mania, both running and rendering graphics using the Vulkan API in Yuzu emulator, this becomes a massive deal and a massive milestone in this API's development. So we still don't have any publicly released builds for Vulkan, we still don't have pretty much anything to do any kind of performance testing with, but hopefully by year's end or maybe even before that, we'll have some kind of work in progress release for us to test and try out. I myself am really, really looking forward to doing all of this testing. Okay, so now that that little bit of news is out of the way, let's move on to the actual focal point of this video, game compatibility and performance updates. Starting things off, let's take a look at Pokemon Let's Go, where once again we have seen a significant performance increase. In the interior of buildings where I previously was getting around 45 to 50 frames per second, I now generally get anywhere from about 60 to 90 frames per second, and in the open world where I would previously get around 20 to 30 frames per second, I am now getting well over 30 frames per second at all times, and usually it stays much, much closer to the high 40s and 50s. Compatibility wise, Pokemon Let's Let's Go, both Pikachu and Eevee can still not be considered fully playable. One, because text and fonts are still not being rendered as you can see correctly on screen right now. And two, because the game still is suffering with random crashes that can pretty much occur at any moment. And while there are some dedicated Pokemon Let's Go fans who have tried to finish this game on Yuzu emulator, for the average user I would have to say that this game is still not playable. The developers are working on pretty much all of the problems that occur not only in this game but in many other games that are also booting on the emulator, so hopefully all of this game's issues will be fixed sooner rather than later. Sticking with Pokemon, let's take a look at our next title in this compatibility guide, Pokken Tournament DX. Thanks to the implementation of the applet keyboard, Pokken Tournament is now able to progress past the initial boot stage and actually go into its menus and boot successfully into game. As you can see, all of these menus are rendered very, very well. Even moving as far as the battle screen, pretty much everything so far is rendered pretty much exactly as it should be on the Nintendo Switch itself. Unfortunately, as soon as you go in-game, you're going to be met with this horribly distorted and bloomed out broken graphical representation. While yes, you can see that some 3D objects are being correctly rendered, the fact that you can't see any of your player characters makes this game practically unplayable. Let's move on to our next game and one of the biggest titles for the Nintendo Switch, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So as you can see on screen right now, quite a lot of the graphical distortion effects you saw in my previous video have now been fixed in this game title. While performance in the overworld is very, very poor, generally staying well below 15 frames per second, at least in these shrine locations we get fairly decent performance of around 20 to 28 frames per second. And yes, obviously while the game is nowhere near being perfectly rendered, these incremental improvements we have seen in the past two weeks or so are still very, very promising for this game's playability on this emulator. Something that I actually found that was quite hilarious is the fact that in a very similar circumstance to how this game was when it first booted on a CMU, the Wii U emulator, pretty much none of the ruins or anything that is physics based is currently working in this game. So anyone who would have played Breath of the Wild in the early days of CMU emulator, none of the physics bound runes would work at all, basically meaning that you can't progress through any of the story. This is exactly what's happening in Yuzu at this point in time also. Let's move swiftly along and take a look at another very very interesting title running in this emulator. Later, let's take a look at the Nintendo Entertainment System Nintendo Switch Online. So while this Nintendo Switch Online feature has been working in Yuzu Emulator for quite some time now, it has not been working at the best possible performance, basically meaning that pretty much every game would be laggy and unplayable. This has hugely changed and as you 
you're about to see when I load into my game save in The Legend of Zelda, I am now perfectly being locked to 60 FPS in this game. It's not only this game that I am being perfectly locked to 60, it's every single game that's available on this system. You are in fact able to mod other Nintendo Entertainment System or NES ROMs into this applet and play them on this emulator, so it's basically an emulator inside of an emulator which I think is very very cool. Unfortunately at this point in time the audio in pretty much every single one of these games is extremely laggy and bugged out due to some kind of issue with Yuzu's audio renderer. Let's move quickly along and take a look at our next title, yet another Nintendo Switch exclusive, let's take a look at ARMS. So I only covered this game probably about 3 or 4 days ago on the channel and in that video you would have seen that pretty much all of the character shadows were completely bugged out. In this latest Canary version however, you can see that while yes my own character shadow is completely broken and bugged out, pretty much every single other shadow in the game is now being rendered correctly. Technically, ARMS can itself be played from start to finish with absolutely no crashing issues. This basically means that once these shadow corruptions and weird shader cache stutter issues are solved, this game is going to be considered fully playable on this emulator. Staying on the topic of Nintendo Switch exclusive titles, let's take a look at another one, Snipperclips. So while this game does indeed boot and actually performs very very well, it is unfortunately unplayable at this point in time and it's going to become very obvious why when I boot into gameplay. Unfortunately, at this point in time, Snipperclips is suffering with a very, very significant speed up issue, basically meaning that the game is just completely unplayable due to this problem. Hopefully, as with many other games, once this weird speed up issue is solved, Snipperclips will be yet another game to add to the playable arsenal of Yuzu Emulator. Moving on once again to our next title for compatibility testing, this is another game that a lot of you have actually asked me to test on the channel. Let's take a quick look at Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers. This game is now booting and I would almost consider it fully playable on this Nintendo Switch emulator. You are going to see that it is rendering very very well, generally staying locked to 60 frames per second all of the time. In previous versions of Yuzu you would get very severe vertex explosion issues, especially so in this scene right here, however as you can see this is now almost being perfectly rendered. While it's going to need some more testing on my own behalf, hopefully I will be able to submit a report and get this game added to the fully playable list for Yuzu Emulator. Okay, let's move on to our next title, Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy. So while yes, this game is booting and rendering graphics, this is the only title in this compatibility video that actually requires you to turn on accurate GPU emulation. In both Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex and Crash Bandicoot Warped, you are going to get pretty much the exact same graphical representation where in the hub or nexus world where you do all of your level selecting, you are going to get semi-correctly rendered graphics whereas when you actually load into any of the levels, you are going to have very very extreme vertex explosion. Unfortunately, due to these graphical issues and vertex explosions, this game is currently not playable at all. Let's move on once again and take a look at another game I have covered quite extensively on this channel in the past, let's take a look at Bayonetta 2. So in this title we have seen several graphical updates, one for an example is in this area we are no longer getting horrendously flickering graphics. Another big improvement is the fact that in these pre-rendered cutscenes that do not include 3D animation, you are no longer just getting a completely blacked out screen with only audio playing, but now we are getting correctly rendered cutscenes. From an in-game gameplay perspective, we are also getting a slightly better performance than we were previously seeing. Unfortunately, Bayonetta 2 is still suffering from this weird flickering issue that happens from time to time in gameplay. There is however some good news, when you now go underwater, you are now actually getting rendered graphics instead of a completely greyed out screen. Let's move on to our next game title for this video, let's take a look at Batman The Telltale Series. It has in fact been quite some time since I covered this game on this emulator, at least on my channel, and while we have seen some improvements at least to the colouring of the 3D models, they are still very very much so not being correctly rendered in Yuzu at this point in time. Moving forward into some gameplay, you can see that every single one of the character models in the game are not being correctly rendered, even though most of the 3D scenery and areas are being correctly rendered. Once you in fact get past 
past the initial shader compilation stutter, your performance in this game is actually quite decent. Unfortunately, as with what we saw in Snipper Clips, this game title also suffers fairly extremely with speed up in gameplay. And when you consider that pretty much every single Telltale series game, including this one, requires very, very strict timing on some of the inputs, this basically means that this game is currently not playable on this emulator. Let's move on to our second to last game for this compatibility guide, let's take a look at I Am Setsuna. As with the previous game, this is yet another title that I myself have taken a look at previously on the channel. So the last time we looked at this game, it was suffering extremely so with graphical effects. Previously, any of these snowfall effects would be just massive white sheets falling across the screen, meaning you couldn't see the gameplay. And also, previously, none of these interaction menus were being rendered correctly either. While you can see in my frame rate indicator in the bottom of this window that this title is now running at 60 frames per second, the game itself is actually a 30 frames per second title. In order to have the best possible gameplay experience, you can simply lock the emulator to 50% speed inside of the graphics tab. So while it's going to take a lot more testing by both myself and the Yuzu testing community, in the 2 or 3 hours that I have been testing this game so far, I have not encountered any game breaking bugs that stopped me from progressing. This weird flashing you can currently see on screen is due to the fact that I'm running at a twice the game speed at 60 frames per second. As I previously said, if you lock this to 50% speed, it will solve this issue. Let's move on to our final game for this compatibility guide, Ocean Horn Monster of Uncharted Seas. So this game is now rendering and also performing almost perfectly on this Nintendo Switch emulator, and while yes, it is not a Switch exclusive being available on pretty much every single platform, it is still pretty awesome to see it running in this fashion, especially so when you consider the age of Yuzu emulator. As with many of the other games we have covered in this video, it is going to take a lot more testing before this title can be added to the fully playable category on Yuzu Emulator, but hopefully with both my own help and the help of the testing community for Yuzu itself, we will be able to get this game added and tested properly. So that's pretty much it for this compatibility guide guys. As I always say, if there are any games you want to see me test, regardless of what that game is, let me know down below in the comment section, and as I always say, if I can get access to that game, I will test it out for you absolutely no problem. So down in the description of this video guys, you will find a link to the Yuzu Team Patreon page. If you want to help with the development of this emulator, please please head over there and pledge your support. It is only going to be with the support of a dedicated community that this emulator is going to grow even more than it already has in the past few months. So once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.